Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn how to determine which customer had a specific rental item on a specific date in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Audrey in Maple Grove, Minnesota, one of my Platinum members. Audrey says, I run a rental business and occasionally I have to determine who had a particular item on a specific date for reporting purposes. Right now I have to go through the various rental receipts to try to figure out who had a specific item on that date. Is there a way I can just enter the date, select the item, and it will tell me who had that item on a particular date? Yes, absolutely. We can do this with just a little bit of VBA code. It is possible to do this without VBA, but this is one of those instances where it's so much easier just to use VBA than it is to try to construct a query to do this. So I'm going to show you the VBA method. So that means this is a developer level lesson. If you've never done any VBA before, go watch this video first. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. It's free. We're also going to use the granddaddy of all lookup functions, DLOOKUP. So if you've never used this before, definitely go watch this video. This is a powerful one. Watch my video on relationships. Very important to have a good grasp on relationships before you can do this. We're going to make a relational combo box. That's a combo box where it gets its data from a table. All right, so make sure you know how to do that. We're going to use an if-then statement. So here's another video to go watch if you've never done that. I'm going to use my status box, which is basically a text box that I have on my menu where I can display information instead of using message box or anything else like that. So go watch this one optionally. And finally, go watch my video on null. We're going to use the is null function today. So the, the, again, these are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and then come on back. Okay, here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And the first thing we have to do is put in here a product table. So we have something for our customers to rent. It could be an item table. And by the way, you can use this same technique for figuring out what a particular product costs on a particular day. Because I know some of you store... Uh, the, the history pricing of your products. So you got a product table and you got the product pricing table. You can use the same technique to determine, okay, on what date was I selling this particular product for? It's the same, same concept. So let's go make a table. Create, table design. Let's just make a real simple product table. We got product ID. That's our auto number. And we got the product name or description. Don't use just name. Remember, name is a reserved word. You never want to have a field named name. Okay, and there's some other ones too, like date, picture. There's a bunch of reserved words. I'll put a link to my reserved words video down below. All right, let's save this as our product table. No primary key to find, say yes. Let's put some sample data in here. Whoopsie, open it up. I'll put in a phaser rifle, a handheld phaser. What else we got, a com badge and a tricorder okay so we got four items that my customers can rent all right let's close that and now we need a table to track what the rentals are so when a customer rents an item it'll go in this table so create table design all right this will be our rental id that's our auto number all right we got a customer id that's a number of type long integer right that's covered in relationships we're going to have a product ID in here, right? A, a customer rents a particular product on what date? Start date, that'll be a date time, and an end date. Whoops, DA, date time. Okay. And yes, I'm going to leave these as null because we'll put them in manually when the item is taken out. We'll put the start date in there. You could default the start date if you want to because probably you're not going to put a record in this table until they actually rent it. So I could see leaving a default value in here as of equals now. That's fine. If you care about the date and time, if you just care about the date, put date. If it's a full day rental, right? Just like that. But I would leave end date as null. So you don't get a default end date in there until they actually return the item. And you could put other information about the rental action itself in this table. Any notes you have, the price they paid, did they pay for it, that kind of stuff. Okay. We'll assume it's returned once an end date is entered into the system. So we're going to save this now. This will be my rental T, rental T. 
And you can go ahead and make forms for these. I would make, you know, make a product form, obviously, a, a continuous form to list them all, a single form. Same thing with the rentals. You could put a rental sub form on the customer. I, I've got tons of other videos that cover all this stuff. Today, we're just focusing on the logic for seeing who had what product on what particular date, okay? If you want all those bells and whistles, take my full course. I go over stuff in a lot more detail too. All right, so let's put some sample data. It's always easier to work with stuff when you've got sample data in here. Now we're gonna need rental information. So I'm gonna need to see my customer list. Let's put the customers up here so I can see their customer IDs. Again, normally you would do this with forms and I've got my products over here. All right, products go right there. So let's say, all right, we'll start with a rental. Let's say me, Richard Ross, customer one, I rented the com badge, which is three, on let's say January 5th, and I returned it on January 20th, okay? And yes, I'm using ISO dates, year, month, day. If you don't know what those are, I'll put a link to that down below as well. All right, another rental. Let's say uh, Malcolm Reynolds, customer six, rented a handheld phaser. He took it out on January 15th, and he returned it on... February 10th. All right, we'll do one more. Let's say Wesley Crusher, customer seven. He got a tricorder. He took it out on January 10th and he has not yet returned it. Okay, see where we're going with this? All right. All right, let's close all this stuff down. Now we've got enough data in the system to test it and to actually make our lookup form here. So we're just going to do this right on the main menu, design view. I'm going to take this. Let's make this a little bit smaller. This will be our button to do the lookup. Uh, we're going to make this, since this is already a date field, let's make this a date that we can actually change. Because right now, this just says today is, and it has the control source of equals date. But I don't want to fix it to a specific date. I want to be able to type that in. But I still want to default today's date there, right? So if you want to see a particular product today. So we're just going to move this from the control source. We're going to cut that out, and we're going to move it to the default value. So click on here and put default value as equals date. What that does is it says you're going to start off as today's date, but the user can change it. Okay, that's what default value means. However, the control source means it's always fixed at this. It's going to be always fixed at today's date. You can't change it. Okay, that's the difference. Usually control source, you bind it to a field in the table. All right, but this form is unbound, so there's no data behind it. All right, while we're at it, let's go to all over here. Let's change the name of this guy to look up date. That's the name of the field. And we'll put the date right here, date. Okay, and that's just the label. You can put whatever you want in there. Now for the product, let's make a combo box, right? So the user can just pick from a list. So let's come up here and find combo boxes. We'll drop that right there. This is a good wizard. I like this wizard. We're gonna look up the values from a table or query. Next, we're getting our data from the product table. Next. Bring over both fields, the ID and the name. Next, let's sort it by product name. Next. And then that's what it's going to look like, the columns. The key column is hidden, right? Next. And then what label would you like? Product name. Let's make this just product. And then finish. And there's our beautiful little combo box. We'll put it right there. We'll resize it just a wee bit. We'll move you over here so you're right under the other one. Like so. All right, we'll use the format painter and go click, click, and now they look the same. And that's all good, let's make this. I have a thing with all the fields have to line up just right. <laughs> it's my access OCD, right? Now, one of my pet peeves is that the wizard doesn't let you actually name the box. It's called combo 16, so let's call this product combo. And now we can slide this button up just a little bit. That's all the space we need. And we'll say look up rental on the button. You can rename the button if you want to. It's called Hello World button in this database. I don't care for now, but eventually, yeah, you want to put a good name in there. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write some code in this button that's going to say, okay, go to the rental table, look up the record on this date for this particular product, and in the status box, tell me what customer had it on that date. And we're going to do that in tomorrow's video so make sure you turn in tune in turn in tune in tomorrow <laughs> same bad time same bad channel or if you remember you can watch it right now because members get to watch stuff as soon as i make it they don't have to wait till it's actually released on on youtube or on my website 
All right, so come on back for part two tomorrow. We're going to write the code to figure all this stuff out. And that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the Join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. 
Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.